Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3, sorry, Q2 FY23 earnings conference call of the Federal Bank Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sovik Roy, Head Investor Relations, the Federal Bank Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Aman. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this call to discuss our Q2 numbers. I'm sure you all had a chance to go through our numbers and our invested deck for the quarter that went by. Uh, this has been a very good quarter for the bank. We continued to move forward with uh, clarity and intent in the quarter where the external signals were sort of mixed. We saw strong momentum in credit growth which was across business verticals. Our balance sheet crossed a milestone figure of 3.5 lakh crore. We also clocked the highest ever operating profit, highest ever net profit. We saw better NIM, better asset quality, and a multi-year high of ROA and ROE. Uh, we continued to grow faster and gain uh, market share in our identified segments that provided us better risk-adjusted returns. Uh, on call today, we have our MD, Mr. Sham Srinivasan, our EDs, Mr. Ashutosh Kajuria and Ms. Shalini Warrior, along with our group presidents, Mr. Harsh Dugar and our CFO, Mr. Venkateshwar and Venkatraman, along with other senior officials of the bank. Uh, without further ado, I would hand it over to our MD for his opening remarks, and we will follow it up with a question and answer session. Thank you so much, and over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Shavik, and good evening, everybody, for coming on the call. Uh, like Shawit pointed out, we did have a good quarter. I'm sure you've all had a chance to uh, look through the numbers. Uh, our net profit at high, 704 crores was clearly the highest ever in the history of the bank. And uh, that's uh, something that we hope will be some, I can say every, in every call, that this quarter was the highest. Uh, that suggests the trend lines are encouraging. Our underlying momentum is strong. Uh, it's been broad-based and uh, widely between both wholesale and retail, we've been able to see traction across and market share gains are visible on the credit side. Uh, it is, uh, you know, I'm not going to elaborate on the external environment and the world is <laughs> going through turbulence. Uh, most of you are uh, smarter and, uh, you know, have a better sense of it and have great analytical uh, uh, skills and knowledge of that. I'd only say that uh, from our point of view, our, our efforts have been uh, strong will continue to be uh, stronger and better in the quarters ahead. We are encouraged by the quarter that went by or the quarters that have gone by. Uh, the team uh, remains quite focused on what we should accomplish. At the beginning of uh, this financial year, we had said that our focus remains to uh, ensure that our ROA expansion is well and truly uh, on course and the exit ROA, we thought, we would be around the 1.15 mark, and I'm happy that we are able to uh, upfront that, and therefore we are thinking that this year the 1.15 will be more like 1.2 for the full year with an exit rate closer to 1.25. And those uh, improvements are driven broad pace across uh, income expansion, uh, material and well-managed cost structure, and our strong area being uh, credit, uh, credit portfolio management is playing out quite well. So I think uh, on this call, instead of me speaking for long, we'll be happy to take questions. Uh, it's uh, suffice to say that it's been a good quarter. Uh, we are encouraged by the developments. Uh, we are mindful of the challenges in the environment, but it has been no different for, for very long. I think the bank is well equipped to deal with these challenges. We haven't been very extravagant on underwriting credits that are dangerous. So I think we will live through uh, tough phases and continue to grow. Uh, there are challenges in the environment on ensuring that the deposits, uh, deposit growth uh, is, is, uh, is, is sort of good enough to match uh, the credit demand. We think we have a good and well, well constructed models that will help us uh, deliver on both credit and deposit growth. So without much ado, let me just hand it over back to the operator and uh, request uh, questions to come in. And uh, like Shavit mentioned, the entire senior team is with me on the call. We'll be able to answer questions uh, of any nature that comes through this call. So thank you very much and good luck. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is on the line of Maruk Arajania from Novama. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So my first question is uh, on your outlook for margins, uh, given that deposit growth for the uh, whole sector is kind of lagging loan growth. So how do you see margins pan out in the next two to three quarters? And also given that, uh, you know, some of the MCLR book will still not, will not yet be repriced. So that is my first question. I think one of the uh, answer is you saw uh, Q2, the margin expansion uh, play through. 65% uh, of our book is either uh, external benchmark and or MCLR linked. And we pass through particularly on the repo rate uh, almost instantly as the MPC announces the rate. This quarter we saw the benefit of it, uh, the full, 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 all the increases of the Q1 playthrough. So our margin expansion is uh, driven by not just the uh, rate increase, but also by the average earning assets. It's also influenced by lower slippages. So a combination of that should help us deliver on the margin number, which we've been guiding for. And I, uh, at the opening of the call, I did mention that our ROA expansion is more visible, and that's driven by margin expansion. And margin expansion, we have been guiding for something for the full year around 325 uh, and we believe that will uh, be closer to 330 now okay that's for the full year which uh, but you've already hit that rate this quarter yeah but we have a lag of the first quarter to catch up right for the full year rate to be 325 plus yes got it sir so my next question is, if at all there could be any quantification in terms of contribution of your fintech partnerships to total deposits or liabilities or even assets, if at all uh, any such number would be available? Uh, in the interest of uh, privacy of our partners, we don't share those numbers, but you may have seen in the deck uh, the numbers we have shared in uh, sort of indexed and you will see a very rapid growth. Uh, but I, I can also point out, uh, you would have seen in our deck the other income and particularly card fee income growing up quite substantially. The run rate, as you know, we have a very effective partnership on the credit side with one of the fintechs, which is doing remarkably well. Uh, so that is kicking in on the fee, other income and the fee income side. Uh, on the liability side, uh, we are building up a large base of clients. Uh, balances on the incremental flow, of deposits on savings, we are seeing about 10, 10 to 12% of incremental deposit comes through the FinTech partnerships. Okay, so it's 10 to 12% of the deposits. Of the incremental the flow. We have a large incremental deposit. deposits. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And so my last question is uh, on your uh, employee expenses. So obviously your in employee expenses uh, uh, have been... Uh, have seen a modest growth last quarter there was a degrowth this quarter there's not too much growth also because interest rates are rising uh, but uh, in just in terms of the retiral benefits also uh, uh, what percentage of your uh, total employees would be unionized and receiving definite benefits I think, uh, Maruk, we've said that all our workforce who joined us after April 1, 2010, which is about 7,500 employees or more, are on, uh, are on NPS scheme. So that's a defined contribution. The prior to that is defined benefit. That's about 3,500 employees, now 3,500 to 4,000 employees. Okay, so 3,500 to 4,000 employees. Okay. Yeah, maybe Got less, it. maybe 3,000. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome. It's a 3,900, no? Huh? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Kashyap Zaviri from MK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I have just one question. Uh, if I look at your margins this quarter, um, 
because of the increase in the yield on advances uh, higher you know than the, the the cost of deposit uh, we have seen a fair bit of margin expansion here but uh, next year when the deposit uh, rate takes a lead over the uh, you know the yield uh, in terms of uh, public increase uh, what are the levers available to maintain margins uh, or uh, at the current level I think uh, the answer to that is back in the question, right? In the sense that the uh, as the rate increase increases happens, the credit uh, credit uh, pass through is higher and faster, so deposit will lag. So if you talk of the next 12 months and assume there are two rate increases or whatever the rate increases are there, that will pass through, right? And uh, average rate increases, yield increases. Slippages have been well controlled, so the reversal of interest income will be lower, and it will accommodate whatever the increased deposit costs are. So the blended mix, and would you why we are not going over the top and saying margin expansion is endless? But given the levers that you mentioned about, uh, should we would we be able to retain the margins where they are? When I have given a guidance, that's what I am saying, no. I've said we are at around 330 this quarter, and we think the full year number will be 327 to 330. Suggest that we will write the mix of business. You, okay. you, I think we have a slide on showing the mix of business also in the investor deck. Right. How some of our newer, higher margin businesses are beginning to take shape and traction is coming through, and what share of new business they are, and what share of the income, new income they are. There's a pie diagram. Um, yeah. Uh, and if I can just quiz in one one more question, I think your fee income this quarter has also seen uh, 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 you know strong uh, growth. Uh, what would be the reason for let's say something like you know uh, loan processing fees and all you know jumping uh, fair, fairly high? And uh, what's the outlook for next year? Consistent. Uh, if you've seen our fee income, particularly since you mentioned loan processing fees. It's been growing up, uh, and as volume of credit picks up, that is directly reflective of it. And as uh, as we do uh, good business on the corporate side, uh, they are able to generate fee income on the corporate side. When uh, particularly when you are lending to top corporates or very good corporates, where pricing on the credit side is challenged, where our teams are able to uh, get constructive fee income from the customers on a blended basis. And just like the yield on advances on the fee side, also uh, you know the 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 scale is uh, tilted in our favor. It's easy to pass on uh, the fees. I mean, there is no uh, you know competition undercutting on that side either. I'm sure you have been in the market long, long. There is nothing that is free or easy for. Everything is a lot of our negotiation and client engagement. But it also ensures that the relationship and the capability of the teams on the ground. Uh, I would believe that it can't be easy. Sure. Uh, that's it from my side, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Sagar Shah from Philip Capital. Please go. Ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, actually, I had this couple of questions. My uh, first question was uh, related to your to our average cost term on borrowings and deposits, actually. It has uh, gone up by around only 20 to around 4.4 percent. And uh, in the last quarter, you had guided that uh, in spite of the 90 bits in uh, repo rate high, uh, we had passed down on the savings. We had passed down around only 20 or uh, 25 bits due to the change in uh, yields of by the ALL committee. So uh, going ahead, uh, do you see the uh, our average cost on borrowings and deposits going up in the H2 FI 23? And my uh, second question was that uh, in uh, if you com if we compare our deposit growth actually as compared to March 22 and uh, H1 FI 23, we uh, our uh, our deposit growth has lagged actually the advances growth. So uh, do you expect uh, our deposit growth to be better in H2 FI 23 versus H1? These are my two questions. Sir. I think the deposit growth. Uh, lagging H1, I mean, the credit growth is a probably an industry phenomenon, and uh, we have to be balanced about pricing for deposits and uh, calibrating uh, the cost of uh, resources, which we do constantly. The team, uh, you know, continuously evaluates 
at what price point and uh, when we are at a cd ratio uh, you know the late 70s early 80s we have enough re- uh, opportunity to grow as we get closer to the mid 80s we have to be uh, sort of build for pricing for deposits to grow that uh, and fund our credit growth so as we look into the quarters the 3 and 4 we believe deposit growth will be in the teens Uh, maybe early teens and credit growth will be in the late teens so between a mix of borrowings the uh, credit growth uh, meeting the, uh, to meet the to fund the credit growth borrowings and deposits we should be able to ensure that uh, the book remains uh, well you know well taken care of a uh, cost of deposits uh, you know between q1 and q2 the pickup was as i think you also asked about the savings we don't visualize uh, you know passing uh, passing on all the all the rate increase uh, to the sa- to the savings rate it's reasonably price analysis elastic term tends to be more price elastic so we are pricing term appropriately uh, in certain tenors we remain attractive but we don't think we will be uh, you know sort of uh, uh, leading the price war we will be uh, quite competitive but uh, selective okay so how much do you think how, how much our cost on borrowings and deposits on the blended level will go up I in going uh, like i think the answer would be the overall nim number is where i mentioned factor are increasing cost of resources will be okay okay, okay. okay. thank you thank you so much otherwise uh, uh, i request you to go on mute i think you are in some public place please yeah go ahead Go ahead, please operate. Yes, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Simran from Omkara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, you know giving me chance, uh, sir. Uh, first of all, congratulations for a great set of numbers. Uh, there are uh, two questions which I want to ask. Uh, first of all, uh, in the gold loan segment, uh, what's the you know trend uh, you know going there uh, in the in this particular business segment? Means how the customers are you know uh, you know giving back you know money to you. and means i'm asking in terms of the nps in the in the gold loan segment and secondly how is the trend in the sme segment in the in the southern region of the country gold loan continues to be um, reasonably uh, strong uh, you know nps as you know is uh, very negligible uh, more than npa i think it's really the fraud that we should worry about in gold loans and that continues to be uh, strong in uh, if your question is that did you say what is the growth in gold loan or i don't know what what really was other than the npa quality was there a question on gold loan yeah yeah i am you know asking about the quality of the customer means in terms of the re, 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 repayment uh, in, the, in the in the in the gold loan effectively that on credit quality gold continues to be very robust and strong uh, in terms of credit quality except you know there is an odd instance of fraud or something like that that we have to watch out for uh, that continues to be f- pretty pretty okay uh, sme business did you want to know about what the the uh, See, quality uh, yeah, no no i i you know under, i want to understand more about your particular region because you are operating from kerala and you know your that is the main uh, you know ge- geographical thing so i just want to understand I, how the i would encourage you not to view it <laughs> we are operating from kerala and uh, no, 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 no 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 yeah. just i'm i'm just asking from you know that no, so, uh, i'm only sharing with you i'm only sharing yeah, with yeah. you the business growth in commercial banking and business banking is fairly widely spread and i don't see any geographical behavioral difference Uh, except in the past if there were some geographies that were affected either by some floods or local events um, thankfully in the recent past there has been nothing unique that i could call out in any one geography to suggest that some some geography is facing greater stress or otherwise uh, thankfully the covid related supports have worked well and we are not seeing any alarming trends and uh, even the restructured books are behaving reasonably well uh, along along expected lines great great nice to hear this uh, th- uh, thank you sir uh, thank you thank you you're welcome thank you yeah thank you the next question is in the line of nitin agarwal from motilal oswal please go ahead yeah i am uh, maharashtra uh, city quarter uh, nitin the question is the handset please you're not clearly audible hello yes am i audible now better now yeah 
So, uh, congratulations on a very strong quarter. Few uh, questions. Firstly, is on the, like uh, personal loan segment uh, has reported very sharp growth this quarter. It's almost seventy five percent. So, how do you see this trending uh, for the year? Shalini, uh, would you want to take the personal loan? I would think it includes the credit card piece also. Yes, um, that uh, particular number that you're referring to, Nitin, includes the credit card ones, both personal loans and credit cards put together, have shown a significant growth, as you rightly uh, indicated. The uh, thing, a uh, couple of things. One, uh, obviously, our credit card business is relatively more nascent. We started in uh, mid of last year to about September of last year, and between us and our fintech partners, we're growing quite well on the credit card front. Personal loans is something we've been conscious about and how do we kind of calibrate our uh, personal loan growth from a risk appetite perspective. It's only very, very recently in September that we've started doing some new to bank personal loan bookings. So on a low base, you will see an increased uh, growth. Um, the, the higher focus for us is to make sure that credit cards grow well, which um, will happen over the coming quarters. But uh, Nitin, you to remember that this is coming off a very low base. The percentages can be a little misleading, actually. Right, of course, I understand. I mean, I was just uh, trying to assess as to where can we be in the next one or two years if we make in anything. It's growing well, uh, Nitin. It's growing well. It's a focus for the bank, and we think we will continue to give it high attention. Sure, sir. And so, secondly, on the wholesale portfolio, wherein we have seen a pretty healthy pickup and growth until last year, around 10%. Now we are closer to 20, 20 plus. And uh, so, we were earlier cautious on growing this portfolio owing to concerns on the pricing. So, if you can suggest now which verticals are driving the growth in corporate segment and how are the pricing trends now? Harsh, you want to go? Uh, the pricing is much saner today than it was about six months back. It's partly because of the correction of the demand supply situation. The surplus liquidity in the system was upwards of 8 lakh crores for a very long time, which today has come down to 1 lakh crores. Plus, interest rates have hardened. And third, and most importantly, trade offtake has improved. So, between these three factors, the pricing power, and, and especially the pricing of the most finely priced assets has actually been more than the repo hike. And we reach a few 25 basis points. So the sanity is coming back in the market. The correction, which was long due, has come in. Plus the trade offtake has improved. So these are the two factors that are guiding in terms of a better growth and in expansion in the name as well. Sure. And any select segments, verticals, you, you want to highlight behind this growth? Okay. It has been, okay, uh, as of now, working capital, has been the one which has been getting more demand on. But on the CapEx side, there's very clear uptick and interest coming in over there as well. So we do see the rebound being robust and steady over the years. Sectorally, if you look at it, I think it's been across. We're seeing this with auto, we're seeing this with seafood, we're seeing this with renewables, we're seeing that uh, with, with uh, chemicals. So there are quite a few broad-based sectors which are coming in over here. No particular sector which I would define as over here. It's very, very broad based. Okay, sure. And uh, last question is uh, on the divergence between the credit and deposit growth. While you have talked about uh, the, the focus on liabilities and, and uh, like you will not uh, take participate in the rate sort of war there, but how do you plan to mobilize a deposit to support this growth momentum? And in, in context to the recent INR depreciation, how are the trends on the NRE deposit growth side, NRE uh, franchise side? On the NR, we are seeing remarkable uh, inflows. As uh, I think we have shared this in the deck, our uh, remittance share has gone up even further to 22%. I think the last time we spoke, we were in the late 20s. So almost every passing quarter, we are gaining share, which is a very significant development. But all of it is not translating to deposits. I think there is a revenge spending going on by the NRI. Uh, so it could be seasonal. So we'll have to see how that plays out. So our deposit growth is uh, sort of predicated on a bunch of stuff. One is uh, wherever required, we'll be competitive in pricing. Uh, it will continue to be as granular as possible. Uh, NR is beginning to show higher traction in terms of remittance, and it only leads to deposit flow. Domestic deposits is growing quite nicely. Uh, we are expanding our footprint even further. Even in Q1, we are, in the first half, we added about 25 or 35 branches. We believe we'll add another 30, 40 branches this year. So between branch expansion, our fintech partnerships beginning to mature, 
our uh, NR remittances, our pricing of property on term, and uh, selectively borrowing, we will be able to meet our credit demands. Sure, sir. Thanks so much, and wish you all the best. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Renish Boa from ICIC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, congrats on a great set of numbers. So, sir, first question is on the uh, sort of uh, uh, sustainability of this uh, current uh, loan growth momentum. Uh, so, of course, the recovery has been broad based, and you know, most of the segments are uh, growing in 15 to 20 percent range. But if I have to look at, let's say, from next couple of years' perspective, uh, which segment do you feel will drive the growth? Uh, Rinesh, I think uh, it would be inappropriate to talk two years in a very turbulent environment. I think our line okay. of sight is two, three quarters. Uh, not that we are not looking beyond, mm -hmm. but the businesses that we sowed our seeds some time back have all started flowering. Mm -hmm. And which is why in our investor deck we have started calling that out. I think slide number 20, yes. 29, capital yeah, yeah. I saw that, yes. And therefore, that is a promising new opportunity. We think that's scalable. Those are segments that have both potential where we have low penetration in the country, we have low share, and mm -hmm. we believe we have built expertise to grow these segments. So I do think in the coming quarters, year ahead, mm -hmm. these will be and relatively higher margin businesses too. And not mm -hmm. to suggest that they won't get disintermediated, but I think this will remain higher margin. So our belief is that as we scale into these, uh, credit mm -hmm. growth of this kind of order of magnitude is possible. I always caveat it by saying the environment should not become counterproductive. As long as it's supportive, yes. Okay. Uh, we, have, we have demonstrated uh, reasonable uh, clarity around growing uh, without trying to be too cowboyish. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, that has been the core strength of our asset franchise. Uh, so, sir, any any broad, uh, uh, let's say, uh, range do we have in mind that, you know, this uh, CVC, MSME uh, credit card, which is currently contributing 20% uh, to the loan book, uh, is there any numbers? Ranish, that is the incremental yeah. flow. It's not yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, okay, got it. So, that should remain in that range or uh, quarter by quarter it should the increase? Incremental flow, it will increase. On the stock, okay. it will still be reasonably small, but on the flow, it will increase, go to 25%. Got it, got it, sir. And just, uh, sir, again, uh, uh, sorry to coming back to the uh, NIM question, but if I uh, look at the balance sheet mix over last, uh, let's say, two, three quarters, our borrowing has gone up from around 8,000 crore to 20,000 crore now, you know, which is uh, essentially uh, suggesting that we are funding incremental growth via borrowing. So if you can just uh, broadly highlight, is there any uh, uh, rate differentiation between cost of deposit and cost of borrowing? Yeah, I think we, uh, we uh, beginning of calendar 22 and middle of calendar 22, we did see the war on deposits and the pricing war for deposits. We mm -hmm. identified some relatively lower cost borrowing opportunities, which are CRR, SLR free, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we borrowed. But uh, that is a point in time that cannot be sustained because uh, you won't get the money at that kind of pricing sustained basis. So we did get uh, three-year money. We locked in, and mm -hmm. it enabled credit growth. As we see, that's why I said we continuously calibrate credit uh, deposit growth mm -hmm. between paying top, uh, top dollar versus uh, these opportunities, and we'll keep blending that up. Got it. And, and just to follow up on that, so, so sir, we are already at, uh, let's say, a peak CD ratio of 85, okay, uh, and, you know, uh, we might accelerate deposit mobilization in coming quarters. Uh, so, of course, next couple of quarters, you uh, clearly uh, said that margins will remain, uh, you know, around 3.25 to 3.3. But on a sustainable basis, uh, you know, keeping in mind uh, the peak CD ratio, uh, of course, uh, as well as the high yielding products, uh, you know, start contributing uh, incremental growth. So, on a sustainable basis, where do you see our margin settling down, sir? Somewhere in the 330s uh, is where we are uh, working on. You know, hmm. hopefully improving, but 330s. Got it. Okay. Okay. The, okay. Fantastic. Sir. Which Thank you. Which notice is higher than what I've been guiding in the past quarters. Uh, absolutely. So that is why, sir, I was just trying to uh, reconfirm that uh, uh, that next couple of quarters, 330 will be, uh, let's say, the benchmark. And going ahead, it should at least remain at that range. Is what the working we are as a plan. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kaushik Poda from KB Capital Markets Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. 
Uh, hi, Sham. Uh, you seem to have ticked all the boxes. Is there any other box which remain uh, unticked? That's <laughs> question number one. And question number two is, uh, in the result uh, for the note number, uh, just a minute, uh, I think note number eight or something that talks about the resolution assets and you have given the breakup and all those things. So if you can explain that, uh, that note. Uh, Venkat, do you have the results document in front of you? I don't. Venkat, yes, yes. Some, I do have it. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, note number eight, yes. On the resolution plan. But first, first about the boxes that should be unticked. No, I think, uh, you know, Kaushik, unfortunately, this is a, not a static list, right? It keeps changing, and uh, you as an investor will demand more, me as a leader will demand more. So it's a continuous journey, but. Yeah, we would like to make sure that the 1.2 ROI becomes 1.25, the name improves. Oh, we are pushing on all the buttons, and I think we are uh, we are on course. At least uh, the team is marching to a rhythm, and we believe we are doing the right things. Yeah. As you may have observed over the years, we won't do the wrong things, that I can assure. Come again? Uh, I didn't get that. I said, you may have observed over the years, we won't do the wrong things, and I assure you that, I said. And certainly, yes, we are pushing on all the buttons. Okay, and this cost to income ratio has improved massively. I mean, do you see that at the 48% level or improving from this? No, I think we had, uh, basically we have fronted one year of uh, all our deliverables uh, through this year. If you remember, we had said by FY24, we will get closer to 48. We have upfronted, yeah. but that's also because income growth has been strong and we've never been extravagant in costs. Okay. Uh, but as France expansion increases, so some of the you know deliverables that we need to put on the system side, Somewhere in the 48 is what we are guiding for, between 48, 49. Yeah, and uh, if you can explain that note number eight. Yes, I can uh, do that. This uh, note is nothing but the RF1 and 2 in terms of the exposure and what has turned into NP and which are the accounts which have paid us. So this is a format which has to be disclosed as per regulatory requirements. This is pertaining to RF1 and 2. Restructuring during COVID, Kaushik. Okay, and do you see that, see, uh, I think 138 crores have fallen into NPA, and do you see the similar kind of run rate every quarter, or in that ballpark? So the first half, half, half year is 138. Yeah, yeah, I mean, do you see that uh, at 150, around 150 crores for the next uh, half years also? It could be, it'll be in our overall slippage number. In the first half, our overall slippages was about 800 dot crores. Right. And in the second half, this overall slippages could be around 900 to 1,000 crores, and this okay. will be within that. Okay, okay. So this is part of that overall slippage, right? Yes, yes. And we've made excess provisions, and I didn't, uh, thank you for pointing it out, uh, we're carrying excess provisions on the restructured book, and also this quarter, most of you would have observed, we have uh, further increased our PCR by 250 basis points. So that includes that excess provision, right? No, no, that is separate. That is outside of it. That's outside of it, okay. So okay. standard asset is separate from the... Provision is on standard assets, restructured standard assets. And provision coverage ratio is on NPS. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lalita Srivastava from Anvil. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for the great set of numbers. Uh, first of all, uh, one thing I wanted to ask, uh, if you can share the breakup of the provision instances for this quarter. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks. Sir. Did you want the breakup of provisions? Yes, sir. I think it's there in the deck, right, Venkat? Yes, yes, it's there. I'm just looking at which page I'll... Check. Yeah, please. Uh, I wanted to know, you know, this credit cost has gone up on a sequential basis. And uh, so, any any comments you have on that? I mentioned just now that we've increased our provision coverage from 65 to 67 and a half. That's 100 crores extra. Every That's... 100 basis point, every uh, every 100 basis point is about 40, 40 crores. Right, okay. Yes, Cross NPS 4031, so every 1% would have a 40 crores additional, you know, if you want to increase the coverage. And we have increased by about 2.5%. Okay. Uh,
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Subrat Devedi from SBI Life. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, two questions. First is, just wanted to know, uh, in terms of the increase in your cost of lending, uh, how much has, has it been for retail and how much has been for large corporate over the over this quarter? You mean the rate increase? Yes. Uh, I think uh, between the two businesses, uh, both have been able to pass on the rate increase of the 140 basis points, between 110 to 115 basis points have been passed on to on the lending side. You know, the Q1 and Q I was uh, asking, sequentially. Sequential what? Uh, rate increase? Yes. Yes. Yield of more about 35 basis points, right, uh, Venkat? Yes, 36, correct. Yes. Yeah. No, so how much on the retail side and how much for large corporates? More or less, more or less equally weighted. Okay, okay. And my second question is, when you say that uh, you have met some of the uh, liability requirements through borrowing, opportunistic borrowing, what sort of borrowing are these? Uh, from, from financial institutions like CDB, NABAD. Refinance, refinance, which is CRR, SLR free. No CRR, SLR applicable. Okay, okay. Uh, that's all for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krishnan ASV from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Well, to put many thanks. Uh, so, Sham, uh, just wanted to understand uh, your thoughts on uh, the EBLR transmission a bit. Uh, you seem to have a lot of discretion on the deposit side in terms of not wanting to pass it on. And yet on the asset side, there seems infinite elasticity there. I just want to understand, does the RBI allow this? Uh, could, they be, could they be looking at this a lot more closely in terms of uh, exercising discretion? And the second related question is at some stage, if it begins kind of... <laughs> You know, you're breaking the camel's back. Do banks have discretion to typically not pass it on completely at all? So if there's a 50 basis points increase in the repo rate, do banks, including federal, have a choice to pass on only, say, 20 basis points out of that? I think it's a bunch of things, uh, Krishnan. I don't think I can give an answer saying yes or no. Uh, we uh, Every time there's an MPC and a rate change, we... A look at portfolio by portfolio, segment by segment, spread, yeah, and then take a call. In certain areas, we may not be able to uh, offer the entire increase. In certain areas, we may have to offer the entire increase. So it's, uh, I, I don't think I have an answer saying yes or no, or uh, it's a very, a very nuanced, very layered. Uh, and uh, for some ticket sizes, we may have passed on the entire also. And, and just between how this acts on the deposit side versus the loan side, on the deposit side, when you don't pass it on completely, it's obviously not hurting us right now, right? I mean, it, it's quite... Oh, it's, 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 you know, it's not like it's not hurting. Uh, it, uh, the, uh, there is a transmission delay and there is a quantum that changes between credit and deposits. No, I mean... If I may respond uh, to your question further, is that... that uh, you know, I think on the loan side, there is a mandatory linkage to external benchmark. So you have for a particular segment like retail, MSME and all, you have to necessarily uh, link your loan pricing uh, to an external benchmark unless it is fixed rate. Whereas on the deposit side, uh, presently, the, there is no such a regulatory requirement of, uh, you know, linking your deposit rate to um, any external benchmark or so. So... Therefore, you know, savings bank any day, I mean, like you, uh, you know, uh, some banks who earlier had, you know, their uh, savings bank linked to uh, repo have delinked it. So that's the difference here. You can uh, delink and decide based on how the competition is and how much you want to, uh, you know, uh, encourage the saver to put money with you because that's a very tough competition. And 
I would say almost similar rate is passed on on the term deposit side. If you see the way term deposits have moved from less than 5% or so to now nearly uh, 7%. So uh, uh, with 190 basis points high, you have seen almost 200 basis points hike on the term deposit side. <clears throat> okay, so I okay I get that. Uh, I mean, I'm, what I was trying to understand, uh, uh, I guess, I guess Ashutosh is uh, more around uh, the fact that on the loan side, at least, there is obviously a spread, right? And that spread ideally does not change. So if a Krishnan was already pegged to repo plus say 200, 300, whatever that number was, that spread of 300 stays constant no matter what the RBI does, right? Or do you have discretion to bring that down if you believe that the risk is going up? No, no, the risk spread changes based on the risk <laughs> profile of the customer. The customer risk profile deteriorates, then the risk spread changes. Spread can change on, in two ways, you know. One, if in case the uh, credit quality deteriorates, you can increase the spread and all, like uh, internal rating change or external rating change or something like that, or some friends being, uh, you know, defaulted and all. On the other hand, on the, um, you know, I mean, um, uh, deposit side, there is nothing called, you know, I mean, you have an external benchmark to which it could be linked. On the loan side, again, you can reduce the spread uh, when the renewal happens or reset happens. So it's not that if, you, if your uh, account is performing very well, uh, the right is there available with the bank to reduce the spread. So on both sides, you know, you can increase it as well as you can decrease it, uh, subject to certain uh, you know, requirements. Otherwise, normally spread is non-negotiable. Got it. Just the other thing was about it's not hurting us now. It's not on the P&L front that I meant, but the fact that because 90% plus of our plus of the bank's deposits are are franchise deposits in a manner of speaking, they keep coming no matter. They are kind of rate inelastic, right? None of the deposits, I think a good chunk of deposits these days are not uh, rate inelastic. Uh, people demand, you know, I mean, based on the competition that you are facing. Got it. Uh, this is extremely helpful. Thank you. Thanks and extremely good. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Kumar from Suniti Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir, and uh, co congratulations for a uh, good set of numbers. And uh, as per uh, commentary, most likely to continue further. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, uh, one is on the capital adequacy side. Uh, uh, actually, in last quarter, we have consumed around uh, roughly around 75 bits uh, of uh, a CAR. So uh, just maintaining the current uh, uh, loan book growth, uh, I, I already mentioned in last quarter that uh, the bank is going to raise uh, 120 billion of uh, fund, uh, uh, 40 and 80 of equity and debt. So if you could give some that uh, because I think that in this growth maybe uh, we have uh, highly needed uh, to re raise uh, in in last of this financial year. Uh, so first one is that and give uh, some, uh, some outlook. And second is uh, on uh, asset quality side. Uh, the restructure books uh, almost uh, uh, stable. I mean, but not has come down uh, even in the uh, uh, better picture of the economy. I mean. MSME is doing better, and but still the it it is remain at same level. But I I I, I mean uh, it is not on the hurting level. I mean it is on very controlled uh, uh, as per the other banks. But if you could give some that when we will achieve the uh, pre-COVID level uh, on the especially restructure work side. Otherwise, uh, asset quality on uh, I think so it is very good. Thank you. No, the restructured book will as the restructured. Uh, you know the, the demand on it uh, increases. The you know bulk of it will be in Q3 and Q4. So we'll see that uh, performance and how it's shaping up. And therefore, by end of financial year, you'll see a better uh, sort of consistency versus a pre-COVID period. And on the uh, first question, I think you mentioned about capital consumption. Uh, yes, we think uh, this financial year, uh, when we put back our full year profits, as you know, the Q2 profits are not in the uh, ratio. When we get back to a closing of financial year, we will get back somewhere near 14% uh, crack. 
and uh, that's our model. But having said that, in early financial year 2024, 20, uh, if the uh, situation is conducive, we can consider, but we are not in any, it's not in our planning horizon just now. And okay. the 12,000 crore uh, was an enabling resolution we took from shareholders, should the need, need arise. I mentioned that in the last call also. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. That's it from my Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Mahesh MB from Kota Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, good evening, sir. Um, one first question is on the OPEX line, sir. Uh, just wanted to understand um, the the growth rate on the staff side, even if you adjust for the family pension has been on the lower side. Uh, directionally, how are you seeing this number, especially with wage cost uh, likely to be seeing a revision from the ne next wage settlement cycle? And also, correspondingly, on the other OPEX line, also it's been quite high for the kind of loan growth that you're showing. So it will continue to be this kind of run rate. Uh, neither of them will dramatically alter. There are no one-offs one way or the other. This trend line will continue. There's no pension-related uh, lower provisions, higher provisions in this quarter, right? Or it's just a normal run rate at which you're running now? Nothing material. Venkat, uh, would you want to answer that? Is there anything that's unique, say, different? I mean, they, of course, yield-related, some benefits are there. Actually, driven, there's no one-offs or uh, any material pension-related. It's the normal run rate. And on the other OPEX, it's largely driven by volume-related costs. Okay. Um, second question, sir. Um, on the deposit side again, sorry, uh, this question has been asked repeatedly, but uh, just kind of taking it a, again a, a different way to look at it. Um, are there any segments within the deposit book that is seeing a slower growth in the sense that are, when you look at your, let's say, retail deposits or households, are they saving less? Are they drawing down? Oh, NR savings I mentioned is uh, rate of savings. Rate of remittance is much higher. Rate of savings is lower. That's on the saving side, right? On the deposit yeah. side? That's what I'm saying. On the, term deposit side. on the term deposit side, sorry. Term deposit, we are not seeing anything different. It's price elastic, and uh, in segments that we are offering good pricing, we are seeing good price, good traction. Okay, perfect. Um, thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Uh, Namaskar, sir, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, First, just to sum it up, sir, uh, we are looking for an uh, ROE exit of uh, closer to 1.3 for FY23 and named uh, inching up to 3.30. This is what the uh, sum and substance. Uh, so I said ROE, ROE ex exit closer to 1.25, not 1.3. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, name of 3.3. Yes. <clears throat> okay, sir. And uh, and for the and for the fundraising exercise, you just early, earlier commented that uh, there is no plan uh, at least for H2 to raise capital. We would be uh, uh, we would be looking for forward for fundraising only post our uh, uh, financial account uh, full year numbers are there, and then uh, looking at the environment, we would be contemplating uh, whether uh, a fundraising uh, would be the need of the RM. That is what the fair, that is a fair assessment, yes. Okay, so now sir, coming to the uh, uh, the line item of treasury income, sir. If we look at the uh, the treasury income part, sir, how much? Uh, what is the contribution from GSEC, sir, for, uh, in, uh, under this line item? How has the GSEC portfolio performed uh, and its contribution uh, for uh, under the treasury segment? And what are the key uh, uh, key parts of this treasury income of six hundred and seventy one crore? Ajitra, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, the GSEC contribution, I think, from the interest rate products, the contribution in first and second quarters has not been uh, considerable. Uh, you know, in first quarter, it was single digit. In second quarter, also, it has been hardly 20, 25 crores or so. But, uh, you know, I mean, what is important is to, I mean, this is the time when uh, it was required to protect the portfolio. So for, from mark to market point of view, there had not been, uh, as I uh, you know shared with all of you, you know, in the first quarter itself after first quarter results, there had been a massive reduction in modified duration, which resulted in a, you know I mean lower uh, provisioning requirement uh, in first quarter, and this quarter the yields are, have actually you know been flat or rather they have come down a little bit, little bit because uh, you one sees only the benchmark. Uh, if you see the other papers and all, I mean, there had not been much of a uh, change, you know, 
barring very short and all that and uh, therefore you know our uh, uh, portfolio for second quarter again had some little bit of in i mean a couple of crores of write back rather than providing so that's on the uh, treasury fund but there had been good uh, earnings on non interest rate related products also like equity and all that a very strong progress on the fx fx had been very strong but fx is in uh, core uh, core fee income because that's uh, related to merchant transactions basically with corporate credit growth uh, there mm -hmm. had been opportunities more opportunities to provide the hedging and all that and through that there had been a, a good you know growth there okay so this uh, but sir, uh, in the fee income part we have uh, again good uh, put a net profit figure of uh, forex transaction at 94 crore yeah, so that that's that is different that's what i am talking about yeah okay and that that is uh, that is uh, on the, uh, the, the that is on account of the improved business transactions at, uh, 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 on the for, uh, on the foreign exchange front we call it merchant forex forex uh, this is the uh, profit related to our relationships this is not proprietary trading this is client based income client based income okay client based income this is this, so just wonder, wanted to understand the nature of the transaction mane what service are we offering that that results in uh, these these kind of uh, profit and whether these are sustainable numbers i think so quarter on quarter offering, it is we are offering the entire so, range of hedging products which are permitted by reserve bank of india with all Uh, you know required uh, so called mitigants like you know uh, the uh, customer appropriateness and all so uh, based on that you know this entire range whatever is permitted to be offered in india is being offered and what should be the value of the transaction sir uh, on which we have booked this 94 crore uh, uh, profit how much is the business transacted on account of for this for sec i need to check back because there had been lot of volatility and uh, all that i think uh, transactions have been quite high i mean as far as uh, the remittances is concerned there also you know you have your counterparties like uh, exchange houses and all so these are also uh, you know i mean uh, covering their transactions and all so there has been a mix of all that and because of volatility there were other arbitrage opportunities as well so all put together this comes to this number Right, sir. So, point is that on the on the basis of the other income component or the fee income part, the line item of 540 crore, which we posted for this year, uh, taking into account the composition, uh, how likely is that uh, this this could be a sustainable number going at? Because uh, it has various variables and parts to it. And uh, how should one look uh, going at? Because this is a it's constant a jump. Structurally, our belief is structurally, it's granular, it's structural, and it's consistent. uh variability in that can be 5% this side that side right sir and the, the last line item was on on profit on sale of security that was 70 crores so that is a one one of item only that won't that appear could, that could that could have had some recovery gains yeah that's not entirely on account of profit on sale of investment let me clarify that it has multiple things you know that other income other than this core fee income you are i think you are talking of the difference between 610 and 540 540 yes sir yes sir yes sir and 610 being non interest income that includes dividend from uh, associates and uh, you know subsidiaries that includes uh, you know a recovery in return of assets uh, that has partly some profit on sale of invest all put together that number is 70 crores correct sir and anything you want to speak on the npf front sir on the whether where are we going to likely end the year on the growth in the net npf front the numbers which we are targeting see no, at the beginning of this financial year six spot sorry word So the, the beginning of the financial year, we had said that the full year slippages. If you remember, first quarter was about 450 crores. We said the full year slippages will be in that 450 times 4, around 1800 crores. Second quarter was exceptionally good. We think Q3, Q4 will be between 900 to 1000 crores for the rest of the FI. The credit cost of around 50 to 55 basis points. Uh, so, uh, on a percentage return, sir, uh, any any ballpark which we are targeting to end the year or uh, how the second half, we have a gross NPF of 2.46 and uh, the net at 0.78. Yeah, I think I mentioned credit cost 50 to 55 basis point, coverage ratio 67.5 percent. We will seek to improve those, so it should only keep improving there or thereabouts.
Okay, sir. So uh, to conclude, sir, the trajectory is very strong, and uh, on this strong path, uh, we are continuing to uh, march ahead. Uh, the, the, the factors that has enabled us to post these numbers uh, are uh, are gaining strength rather than being one off. This is be the uh, the, I, the sum and substance. I, I would like to believe that. That's why I opened the call. It's broad based. It's granular. It's organic. It's uh, deep rooted. Thank, thank you for all the elaborate answers, sir. Uh, all the best to the uh, team, sir, going ahead. Stay safe, sir. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suraj Das from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Thanks for giving the opportunity. A couple of questions. Put your voices. If you can, I request you to please use the handset and come in and network, please. Yeah. Am I audible now? Better? Better now. Yeah, sir. The first question is on the restructured book. If you can explain, I mean, how much of the book could be, you know, out of moratorium and resume billing, and uh, how much percentage of the book is still under moratorium? And also, you mentioned some excess provision on the restructured book. If you can quantify uh, what would be the, you know, excess provision on the restructured book? Yeah, that is the first question. Uh, yeah, I think Venkat mentioned 138 crores is the excess provision, more than the mandatory provision. So we are holding close to 650 crores on the restructured book. Okay, and sir, how much percentage of the book would be, you know, out of moratorium and has resumed billing, and what kind of think, uh, we have seen uh, in from the coming book? two quarters, Raj, if you are there on the line, I think in the coming two quarters, about uh, uh, between this quarter and the next, close to thousand crores would come, right, Raj? Uh, three hundred plus three hundred, sir. Uh, Six hundred crores. Six hundred crores, and seventy percent of the book has already come out for demand, as on thirtieth of uh, September. So we've got only thirty percent of the book left. To come out from moratorium. Okay, okay, understood. And so the second question is more of data keeping. So if you can, you know, you have mentioned uh, some uh, during the call that around 65% of the loans are, you know, floating rate linked. If you can bifurcate that, how much would be holding percent and how much would be the NCLR fixed rate and uh, others? 50% is repo, 15% is MCLR, 25% is fixed, 10% is uh, uh, employee and uh, FX and so on and so forth. Okay. And advances, advances against deposits. Understood, sir. Okay. That is from uh, my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Manish Shukla from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, first question is that over the last few months, we've seen RBI make a lot of changes to regulations around fintech. Has that made you revisit how you engage with people? I think it's encouraged us because uh, our model has been very, uh, you know, I've said this in every call. We believe very fully in the fintech partnership model. Uh, we have created capability capabilities that are very fintech uh, sort of enhancing. And which is why through all this process, we didn't see either a partner getting nervous or we getting nervous, and we are quite confident that this momentum will continue. We have looked at fintechs for liabilities differently from assets. And all our top four, five fintech partners, we have many, but the top four, five have, uh, are continuing to storm ahead. And we think that model works for us. Uh, we haven't seen be nervous by any of the changes, some tweaking in uh, rela uh, relationship and pricing has been done. Oh, we're quite pleased with that. Shalini, you want to add, please? Yes, Sham. Um, just to <clears throat> kind of expand that further, if you look at just the digital lending guidelines as one of the areas which has come up, uh, clearly we believe that it has helped in terms of transparency from a customer standpoint and clarity on what, uh, how the relationship should work. And we've used that as a basis to kind of structure some of our fintech partnerships. You'll see in the investor deck, for example, one of the ones we launched towards the end of September, fully compliant with all the digital lending guidelines, was the one with Paisa Bazaar. So the broader point is, um, you know, these regulations are actually quite useful in making sure we understand how the uh, collaboration works and how the, um, you know, linkages work. Uh, we do believe that um, they're in the right direction and they really reinforce our continued um, emphasis and strategy of FinTech. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, second question, Sharam, is that everything that we've discussed on the call so far, right, points towards a very benign environment, home growth, margin, asset quality. What is it that worries you at this point? 
<laughs> I think I've said this in every call. I, uh, I'm a warrior. So we worry about everything that can go wrong. And certainly, uh, you know, the things that uh, have looked robust need not look robust. Uh, there can be some uh, stress in the environment building. But I think structurally we have, we believe that the COVID has taught both the bank and the customers to navigate very tough periods. Uh, those who have withstood the last two years, I think, can withstand any of the forthcoming stresses. So that gives us the confidence. Yes, the war for deposits will intensify, but so will our abilities. So am I worrying about everything? I think yes, but I think structurally we are better off than we ever were. That, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Darpin Shah from Haitong, India. Please go ahead. Thanks. All my questions have been answered. Uh, Shavik, I think we should bring it to a close. Maybe one last question, please. Sure, sir. Sure. We'll take the next question as the last question from the line of Pankaj Agarwal from Ambit Capitals. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Pankaj. Go ahead. Sir, uh, how much extra liquidity will be carrying at this point of time versus the regulatory requirements? <laughs> Meaningful. So, reason I'm asking is that, uh, you know, that for some, uh, for how much more, you know, you can, uh, you know, you can grow your loan book without, you know, growing your deposit. I think the, the, the mechanism. Yeah, so, I, 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 I got the question. I said meaningful. We can grow credit, uh, like I've said in the beginning of the call, between a mix of deposit, borrowings, our own uh, uh, resources. I think credit growth of High teams is possible. Okay. Okay. And that that can last for another couple of quarters. I mean, my yes. broader question was that the gap between deposit growth and loan growth, I mean, can it sustain for another, another two quarters? Uh, rest of, yes. So we have, a, we have a plan and we have the ability. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I would like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sovik Roy for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you so much, Aman, and uh, thanks again to all the participants who dialed in today on a Friday evening. If you have left any questions unanswered, we would be very happy to engage with you offline. With this, we'll close the call. Happy Diwali in advance, and see you all on the other side of Q3. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. All the best. Happy Thank you, everybody. Happy Diwali in advance. Happy Diwali to everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Federal Bank Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. I need me now to disconnect your lines.